Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Good evening, I'm Pamela Osborne. We've seen a little bit of everything when it comes to winter weather this weekend. There's been snow, rain, and now get ready for some bitter cold. Here's a quick look outside all over the viewing area from Ann Arbor to Detroit to Mount Clemens. It looks like the snow is winding down this evening. Our forewarned forecast is always looking at what's next. So let's head on over to Brian Sherman for a sneak peek at the week. Brian. Hey there, Pamela. Good evening, everyone. This latest round of winter weather winding down. We're Working throughout the day, exact track 40 radar clean sweep for most of southeastern Michigan. A few snowflakes showing up right around Saginaw working into the evening hours tonight. But we've got one more round of winter weather on the way as we head from Monday afternoon and into early Monday evening. And we'll put throw Monday morning into that as well. 30 right now here in Detroit, 28 working into Ann Arbor, 27 right now over in Howe and 28 as you're working over into Adrian. Cloud cover sticking around all day long. The snow we had early this morning winding down toward mid to late morning, but we will keep that cloud cover into the overnight hours tonight. Temperatures slow to fall upper 20s by 6 o'clock this evening, dropping into the middle 20s by 10 o'clock tonight, but we've got some bitterly cold air with multiple nights this week with wind chills into the single digits and below zero with air temperatures into the single digits as well. I'll talk about how long that's going to last and when we may see that freezing mark again. Your complete forewarned forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Also a good time to download that forewarned weather app, exact track 4D, future cast and weather alerts all in the palm of your hand. You can find it in your favorite app store. Just search WDIV. Also new at six, the community comes together to remember a family whose story has broken hearts across Metro Detroit. You may remember Monica Kennedy and her two children froze to death earlier this month while sleeping outside in Pontiac. A vigil started for them a short time ago. Our Jacqueline Francis is there and Jacqueline, this vigil is about more than just remembering those lives cut short. Pamela, that's right. There was a big focus on mental health awareness because that was what's at the crux of this tragedy. But first, I want to show you that vigil that ended a short time ago. The community and loved ones returning to the field where the two kids and their mother died. Monica Kennedy, along with their three, her three year old and nine year old sons, froze to death earlier this month. The mom was said to be suffering a mental health crisis. Monica's oldest child, nine year old Lily, was also with them in that field. She was the only survivor. Family members tell us that Lily is out of the hospital after being treated for hypothermia. Take a listen. She's doing well. I mean, under the circumstances, she's, you know, she's holding up. She's, you know, she's surrounded by family and lots of love. And, you know, just one day at a time. That's that's all we can ask with her is one day at a time. Tonight, we also heard from community leaders like the mayor of Pontiac and city council members as they underscored the importance of mental health awareness and the resources out there to try and prevent something like this from ever happening again. Reporting live in Pontiac, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. All right, Jacqueline, thank you. The entire country is still grappling with questions about the police beating video involving Tyree Nichols down in Memphis. For a second straight day, Detroit activists showed their frustration with a protest. Late this afternoon, they gathered outside of Detroit police headquarters. They're furious over Nichols' death and are also pushing for more answers about deadly police shootings in Detroit. We haven't seen anything as blatant as Nichols beating, but we've seen two recent shootings where people were killed while having mental health episodes. Nichols' death once again putting a white hot spotlight on all police interactions. And Detroit police are asking for your help finding two carjacking suspects who forced a man out of his car and then drove off. Take a look at the photo of the suspects. Both are described as thin, slim men. Uh, one is wearing a red hooded sweatshirt and the other is wearing all black clothing. The carjacking took place in the 19,000 block of Telegraph in the early morning hours of January 24th. That was last Tuesday. If anything about these guys looks familiar to you, call police or 1-800-SPEAK-UP. The Macomb County Sheriff's Office has made an arrest in an arson fire that scorched a van belonging to the county. Take a look at the damage. We're told the Mount Clemens Fire Department was called to the Macomb County parking structure around 2 this morning. Firefighters put out the flames. The van was then towed away. Luckily, the parking structure is OK, although a few parking spots are being cleaned. We're told a suspect is in custody. 
The Washtenaw County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help to find a missing 15 year old girl who has not been seen since Friday. Investigators say Adriana Davidson of Sio Township last communicated with her family around 9 a.m. on Friday on her way to school. Friends also say they saw her around 11 a.m. outside Pioneer High School, but now she can't be found. The Sheriff's Department is actively looking for Adriana. If you see her, you can call one of the numbers on your screen there. We've posted those numbers at clickondetroit.com as well. Now to the story of a remarkable transformation in the city of Inkster. A troubled motel was condemned by the city, but it's now getting new life as a destination for affordable housing. A local couple has been on a mission to revitalize the city, and we're getting a sneak peek at some of the results. Our Megan Woods takes us to the site for a personal tour. From the parking lot to the rooms this past year, this property has been under some much needed transformation. It was completely unlivable. Um, it was 64 units. We gutted it down to the studs, um, made a lot of the rooms bigger, so now it's 32 units. Jennifer Meddy of AAHM Investments is part of the husband and wife team behind the construction. It's one of their biggest projects yet. We have worked in the city of Inkster and operated our business out of the city of Inkster for 20 plus years, so we have been invested into this city. Um, so it does mean a lot. They bought the property in December 2021 and have been working ever since, tackling outside first. Completely redid the uh, parking lot area, needed a lot of work underground. There was some sewer lines and sanitary uh, drains that were collapsed. Then there's the upper walkway. This used to be concrete down here. And what we did is we replaced it with the Trex floorboards. It's maintenance free. It looks nicer. And the unique ways they covered extra doors when they combined the rooms. We filled these in with, you know, decorative wood, trimmed them out with aluminum. Sure, it takes a lot of work and money to turn this into this. But if you ask Jennifer why, she'll simply answer. Why not? There's a need. And what we don't need is another motel. We have plenty of them here. They're all over the place. What people need is affordable housing. She says rent will be in the $700 range and managed by another company. She believes this will not only change how people look at Inkster, but set a new standard. If we can, you know, kind of set the bar that look what we're doing and it's successful, maybe some of these other people will follow suit. We're going to just set the bar there and see what happens. In Inkster, Megan Woods, Local 4. The couple expects to be finished and ready to move people in by spring. They're also renovating Inkster's old ice arena to be a recreation center after being abandoned for several years. There's much more news ahead, including a devastating tragedy overseas. Dozens of people died doing something many of us do every day. First, dating app danger. Police in Oregon launch a manhunt for a suspect they fear is going online with possible criminal intentions. The rest of the story right after this break.